Welcome to the Momming with Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Hargrove. On this show, I help moms discover Jesus in their motherhood. I hope this show encourages you in your mom journey. Enjoy the message. All right. So today's message is titled Keys to a Peaceful Home. Keys to a Peaceful Home. So I was reading and when I read today, um, I've, I've read this verse quite a few times. And as I read it, it just literally, it was one of those that popped out to me, like in a moment, like, yeah, sometimes I'm reading. I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. That really speaks to me. And then there's sometimes I'm reading and I'm like, whoa, that like, I felt like it jumped off the page. And in Proverbs 17, one, it says better a dry crust with peace and quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. And it, I feel like this message today kind of um, continues to share the heart of our last message. In the last message, we talked about a gentle and quiet spirit, right? And the beauty of that, if you didn't check it out yet, take a moment later on this week and check it out. But this verse again, it says, better a dry crust with peace and quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. And that's in Proverbs 17.1. And, you know, have you ever sat down for a meal with family, maybe a nice ribeye, oh my gosh, butter sizzling, maybe some sizzling jalapeno poppers, maybe a crisp Coke, and you still hear the fizzle of the carbonation. But even though that meal looks delicious, the room feels so awkward and tense and maybe a little too quiet because maybe just before that moment, there was strife or maybe ongoing conflict. Maybe you and your husband, I don't know, maybe y'all got into it for something as simple as someone forgetting to get the salad bag at the store that day, or maybe as big as the memory of addiction and affairs that almost destroyed your marriage. Or maybe you and your mom were cooking together and right before you sat down, she began to make comments about your cooking or your house not being as clean as she would have it. Or maybe she's like, girl, you put on a little bit of weight. Oh, maybe it's one of those comments that stir the beans, right? Or maybe the strife came from a heavy situation with your kids and you're praying and crying for breakthrough, but their hearts are just hardened towards you. And it just doesn't feel like it used to, you know, I don't know what the situation is, but as I think about this verse above, it really makes me think of the value of a peaceful home the value of a peaceful home. And man, is there nothing like having peace with the ones that you love? Is there nothing like your home being a place when, where you, when you go, you feel peace rather than when you go, you begin to be anxious at the potential strife and discord in there. Peace cannot be bought. It is something that is priceless. And granted, there are things in life and situations and conflict that it'll try and steal your peace. I mean, that's an unavoidable. That doesn't mean that if we have issues going on that, oh, my house is not a house of peace and it's all my fault. No, those things are unavoidable, but it's what we do with it. We literally have the ability to keep the peace or to pursue peace. In Matthew 5, 9, it says, God blesses those who work for peace for they will be called the children of God. And I believe that God's desire for us is nothing more than for your home, for my home to be filled with his peace, with unfailing love and unity. But what do we do when the truth is, is maybe it's not. Maybe right now you're like my house. Honestly, if I'm being real, it doesn't feel like that. There's strife. There's fighting. We're frustrated. We're mad. I don't know what's going on. Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to learn about the importance of choosing love over offense, of watching our tongue and having healthy boundaries in our relationships to ensure peace is possible. In Proverbs 15, 1, 17 through 18, it says this, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Better a small serving of vegetables with love than a fattened calf with hatred. A hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but the one who is patient calms a quarrel. 
And this verse is literally the same concept of the one I read before. The one uh, other one is saying, I'd rather have dry crust and peace than, you know, a fat steak with strife. And this one right here is saying the same thing. I'd rather have vegetables with love than a fattened calf with hatred. You know, it's, it's, there's nothing like having a peaceful home. And so today we're talking about three very simple points. The first one is love. The second one is words. And the last one is boundaries. Very simple, but we're going to get right into it, right? So we're talking about ways or the keys to a peaceful home, okay? And when I began to pray and ask God, what are the keys to this peaceful home? What are the keys to sitting down for dinner and enjoying your company, enjoying your family, enjoying your food and having a home of peace? And I truly felt like he revealed to me these simple truths. Love, um, love are the love that we have, the words that we say and the boundaries that we hold. So let's talk about love first. In Proverbs 17, 9, it says, whoever fosters love covers an offense, but whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. And as I was thinking about a peaceful home and asking God what it meant, I felt the simple answer. Like I said, I felt the first one was love and it sounds a little too simple, right? Like, okay, love. Yeah, girl, I got it. But when we read these verses, we realize love isn't just this pretty little idea. Love is hard. Love itself covers over offenses. It covers sins. It covers the ugly parts of life. If we allow it to love, it gets dirty. Love gets down and love isn't there for the show. It is there for the wild ride of love. True love, in fact, when we pursue love like this, we truly pursue peace. It's actually way easier to be resentful, unforgiving, mad, bitter, and ugly towards others. It is so much easier, especially when they hurt us, right? They make us mad. They don't get us. They're frustrating. It is so much easier. But to love, regardless takes every ounce of our soul. Sometimes it takes digging deep to find that ability to love. Anyways, it requires humility and putting self aside for the sake of love. It requires talking things out. It requires confronting situations. It requires listening and understanding. And that's hard. It requires being humble enough to admit faults or forgive the others for their inequities, 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 in, yep, inequities. I don't know. Okay, there it is. It simply isn't easy, right? But if we desire this peaceful home, if we truly do, it requires that rugged kind of love, God's love, the love that was willing to give it all to restore peace to our souls and be in constant unity with us, that kind of love. So what does the Bible say about that kind of love? Look in 1 Corinthians 16, 14. It says, let all that you do be done in love. Let every single thing you do be done in love. And you know what? It's not always easy. There are times where I'm making breakfast. I make breakfast, lunch, dinner every day. I mean, yes, sometimes we get takeout. Yeah, but for majority, I'm cooking cooking for three kids that all have their different preferences. Yes, of course, I try to say this is what you're eating, but hey, I'm trying my best. I have a husband who, I mean, he eats well. He eats he eats it all. He has his preferences too. There are most days I'm like, okay, la di da di da here you go, make your meal. It's just the normal thing. And there's days where I'm like, babe, what do you want? <laughs> I'm not even joking because I'm so overstimulated. I'm so frustrated. And I'm already making different meals for the kids because they're so picky. And he's like, um, I don't know. And I'm, and I'll literally be like, you better tell me what you want right now. Or you're eating tuna. Cause he hates tuna, for example. And I'm just like irritated. And so I'm being funny and also transparent with you. And I, that was not being done in love. I am not making lunch in love when I am acting like that. So of course, in those moments, I'm like, Lauren, get it together. You are serving the Lord as you serve your family, girlfriend, check it. Okay. And so I'll check it maybe right then and there, or maybe a little bit later. Okay. So I'm trying my best, but God says, let all that we do be done in love. In first Peter four, eight, it says above all. So here's all above it. <laughs> Keep loving one another earnestly 
since love covers a multitude of sins. You see this, we've already heard this idea a while ago. Earlier it's saying love uh, covers all offenses. This verse is saying love covers a multitude. I mean, a multitude of sins. And it says, keep loving. And so many times when we go through things, when we go through offense, when we go through pain, when people hurt us and do us dirty, what do we do? We don't necessarily keep loving earnestly. And we don't really want to do that. We're kind of mad and our hearts get hardened, but God says, keep loving. And Romans 12, 18, it says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do you hear that verse? It's saying, whatever is in your power, whatever you can do to keep the peace with everyone, do it. If it is possible, whatever, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. God is commissioning us and calling us and giving us the responsibility to choose to live at peace with everyone. And how much more important is it to live at peace with those in our own home? And I'll, I understand that it's not easy. In 2 Timothy 2.24 says, A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but they must be kind to everyone. So the person at HEB that's bagging says that literally says, do you want a bag for your milk? Yes, I want a bag for my milk. Be kind to them. Okay, I'm joking, being over dramatic. I don't I don't really like that, right? So, but not only be kind to the person at HEB or Whole Foods, wherever you go, but to be kind to your husband, to be kind to your children. The verse goes on to say, be able to teach and be patient with difficult people. Have y'all ever read that verse? To be patient with difficult people. Did you realize that the Bible says that? Be patient with difficult people. Because what is the opposite of this statement or verse? It is, re it is reacting to difficult people, which will lead to strife, right? Being patient and choosing to love difficult people promotes peace. And honestly, most times it's simply not worth saying what you want to say, guys. I've been there and I've done that. But there is no talking rational sense to an irrational person. Did y'all catch that? I want y'all to know that there are times it is not worth speaking because there is no sense in talking rationally to an irrational person. And I'm not saying that there's irrational people around you and I hope no one's irrational and crazy. But the truth is, is we live in this crazy world and there are. Allowing love to win always uh, allows peace to flow. And I want you to know that I myself have been there. I've tried both ways. I've tried extending love and experiencing peace. And I've also tried speaking my mind and sticking it to them. But that always ends up messy. I don't know about for you, but for me, it always ends up messy. But the times that I take a step back and I think about the mercy I would want when I'm at fault, I am reminded that I should extend that same amount of mercy and love. And that, that thought alone that thought alone always checks my heart. When I realize that, wait, if I want mercy from others, I need to extend it to them as well. That checks my heart because love truly is the way to peace. And so one of the keys to a peaceful home is loving. And it sounds so simple, but it's not. It's choosing to love because love covers a multitude of sins. Hello, beautiful souls. This community thrives on shared stories, laughter, tears, and the strength that we draw from God's word and each other. As we navigate the symphony of motherhood together, our mission is to uplift, support, and empower every mom listening. To keep our sanctuary vibrant and accessible, we are reaching out for your support. Whether you want to become a monthly supporter or by giving a one-time donation of the price of your favorite latte, your generosity helps us continue to bring content that touches the heart, nurtures the soul, and strengthens our faith and fellowship as moms. If our conversations have been a companion to you in your moments of need, joy, your reflection, consider contributing to our cause. Just visit laurenahargrove.com and find the support tab. It's quick, simple, and your support means the world to us and to mothers everywhere. Thank you for being a part of our journey, for sharing your highs and lows, and for mommy with Jesus. Now let's return to today's episode. And moving on to our second point, that is words. Let's talk about these words, guys. 
Second key to a peaceful home. In Proverbs 17, 14, it says, starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam. So drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. How wise, how wise is this Bible, right? How wise a lot of the scriptures I'm sharing today is from Proverbs. Proverbs is such an amazing book of wisdom. I read Proverbs every day along with my other reading. So I'll like read different parts of the Bible, but every single day I read Proverbs because there's 31 and it goes perfectly with each day of the month. Um, and it continuously puts wisdom in my heart, right? And I love Proverbs. And I mean, I feel like Proverbs is so direct too. It's like literally like drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. It's simple. Just sh drop it, right? And one great way to keep the peace is by keeping our mouth closed. Okay. I'm not saying to share that. I'm, I'm also not talking about this. I'm not saying do not share your feelings and communicate important matters. That's not what I'm talking about today at all. There are times to speak. Definitely. You need to have great communication with your loved ones, your spouse, your kids. You need to talk, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I am sharing on this point is more so keeping our mouth shut when the comments that we want to say are not going to be beneficial. That's what I mean. Kind of like the saying, if you don't have anything nice to say at all, don't say it. Or if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all, right? As a grown woman, I'm sure we've all learned that when we do, in fact, say something that's not very nice or in an unfriendly tone, what happens? Typically, some sort of dispute breaks out, right? Some sort of conflict, some sort of strife. There have been times where I have literally have felt God encourage me not to react, I felt it right here. I felt it and I knew it. And I felt him say, do not say anything. Don't say what's on your mind. Even though, you know, those times where you're like, they just need to hear this. Like, I need to tell them what's on my mind because they don't realize what they're doing and you just want to say it. Ooh, gosh, right? And I remember feeling it so strong. And I remember two specific times right now as I'm talking. There's been many. And there's other times where I listen, guys. I do listen to the Lord and I obey him, Okay. But I'm just giving you an example for the times that I remember that I didn't listen because I thought I just really needed to give them a piece of my mind. And that doesn't mean I'm cussing or cussing them out. That just means I'm speaking to them about like, hey, what's up here, right? And boy, once I did, for a moment, I felt relieved because I got it off my chest. And then shortly after, I felt like it slapped me in the face. Why? Because the matter just grew bigger and it got bigger than it needed to be. And it got messy, Right. The relationships became even more strained. And as you can assume, these actions do not lead to peace. And how many times have you felt the desire to retaliate with your words that are bubbling up in your chest, begging to be released? How many of you have felt that like, oh gosh, I just want to say this to this person. Isn't it so hard to resist that sometimes? And like I said, I've been there before, but tapping into self-control is so much more beneficial than you realize. Self-control, ladies. Proverbs 16, 32 says, it is better to be uh, patient than powerful. It is better to have self-control than to conquer a city. Do you see that? It is literally better to have self-control than to conquer a whole city. I think that means something right there. It is hard to watch our words, but if we truly desire a home filled with peace and healthy relationships, maybe we should consider our words a little bit more, right? Because the truth is, is words are powerful. I can give a whole separate message on the power of our words. The Bible talks so much about our words, right? They have the power and they have the ability to create. For example, God created this world with his words. He said, let there be light and there was light. And he gave us the same ability. He made us in his image and our words have the power to create, to create good, but also to create bad. So shouldn't we consider our words a little more? Again, there's so much more on that kind of lesson. And if you want to know more about words in the Bible, go read it. But I also have some messages specifically about that. And I can send it to you. But anyways, the words that we share with our children and our spouses and our loved ones and our friends, they really do matter. So how much more should we say, I want to use my words for peace, for love, for gentleness and kindness rather than wrath and pride and anger and having anger and dealing with these things is human and is normal. But the Bible says, 
Be angry, but do not sin in your anger. So the, the feeling of anger is not the sin. It's how we react. And most times with our words that can lead to sin. And like they say, you catch more bees with honey, right? Is that the right way? I don't even know. Okay. In Proverbs 21, 33, it says, check out Proverbs again, coming in hot today. It says, watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut and you will stay out of trouble. Can you believe Proverbs? It's literally just like, here you go. Here, let me just lay it to you straight. Keep your mouth shut, honey, and you will stay out of trouble. And how many of you know that's true? <laughs> like just zip it. When you're in work in one of those meetings, you want to say, zip it. It's just not worth it. If you're wanting to slander somebody else, just zip it. It's not worth it. Like just keep it to yourself. In Proverbs 16, 28, it says a perverse person stirs up conflict and gossip separates close friends. You know, there are individuals that may be those kind of people that maybe you're around them and you just met. You have you ever heard that phrase? Like, man, they're just stirring the beans. Like my grandma used to always say that, just stirring up the beans. And my grandpa used to always say, just digging up bones. And that's from a Randy Travis song. When you're just digging things up, you're trying to bring dead things back up just to talk about it and spread it and, and talk about unwholesome things. And the truth is, is when we do that, it doesn't lead to peace. And sometimes we just got to, right? And so <clears throat> another key to a peaceful home is simple. And that is watching our words, watching our words. And so let's go into our last point. And that is boundaries, boundaries. So Proverbs 20, 19 says a gossip betrays a confidence. So avoid, here's a boundary, avoid anyone who talks too much. Simple Proverbs coming in hot again, laying it straight. It create it's saying avoid meaning create this boundary if there is someone who talks too much boundary let's go ahead and avoid them and that's not being mean we're, that's not what we're doing right what it's saying is you know sometimes we have to understand is is if we want a peaceful environment the company that we keep and how close we keep them matters boundaries are essential when we are trying to keep the peace Boundaries are spiritual and they're an acceptable thing in your Christian walk. I remember thinking, and some people think that in order to be a Christian, you have to welcome everyone freely in your life for the sake of love and to represent Christ. Right. I used to be young in my faith and like, no, I can't tell them no, or I can't say, Hey, excuse me. Or I can't speak up. I, years and years ago, I was extremely timid and I would be, I was walked all over um, by many people. Like, that's just how I was. I was very much like that. I am a totally different person. Now, okay. Totally different person. And I thank God for teaching me to have a backbone and teaching me the word of God. And, and also my husband really encouraged me to learn, uh, find my voice. And so, but what I'm saying is, is the fact is, is that it is completely inaccurate to think that you have to, open your arms wide open to just anybody because you love them. That is not truly what love means, right? And <clears throat> we are called to love everyone, but that doesn't mean that we have to welcome everyone in close proximity to ourselves and our family if they are not bringing good or a healthy vibe. We don't have to do that. We have to love them, yes, but we don't have to do that. If you notice that a certain relationship or individual always causes strife or gossips or sows division by their words when you're around them, I highly recommend that you reconsider the closeness to this person. In Proverbs 18, 8, it says rumors are dainty morsels that sink deep into one's heart. Gossip and slander are deceptive and they literally seek into your heart before you know it. It's dangerous. If you don't watch out, the gossip and unkept boundaries that you allow will seek into your heart and begin affecting your life, the ways that you view others, your family, your marriage, and so on. And, you know, have you ever talked to someone and maybe someone in particular, and they just keep telling you something about a certain person? And maybe for that person, you enjoy them, you like them, you've never seen anything wrong, like in your opinion. And before you know it, because this person continues to like little by little slander or say like not very nice comments about them, all of a sudden you begin seeing them out of those tainted lenses. 
And all along before that, you were fine. It's unhealthy and dangerous to allow just anyone into your close quarters, especially if they so uh, show these kind of unhealthy vibes, right? So to keep peace in your home and your marriage and your family and relationships, it's important to analyze those in your circle and the influence that they have on you and those that you love. It is important to put up healthy boundaries if needed to ensure that you keep a peaceful environment that you desire. I've honestly seen relationships, but even marriages. So I've even seen examples of marriages affected, um, you know, certain individuals in the marriage saying like, oh, I, I don't know. I feel this, 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 this way about my husband now. And as we've talked, I'm like, okay, well, blah, blah, blah. where did this come from? Blah, blah. And I've seen many times that they say, oh, well, but so-and-so said this about their opinion about my husband. My sister was saying, well, shouldn't they do this? Or shouldn't he act like this? Or I don't like this about them and giving those different examples. And I have seen marriages and relationships tainted, not because of how the other individual felt, but because of those dainty morsels that sink deep into one's heart, because there's other influences that there wasn't a healthy boundary. And they began to allow them to speak into their life and even their marriage to the point where it changed the way that spouse saw their spouse and it began to create division. If we're not careful, others can paint a picture for us that is not real, but only is going to cause deception and strife. So be careful with who you listen to, who you associate with, or who you trust. And prayerfully ask God, God, like, who can I actually trust? Who can I confine in and feel safe with? Because there are such things as trustworthy people, though. I want you to know that they truly are trustworthy people and communities. There are family members that, you know, I love personally. So I'm talking about me, right? So there's family members that I love, but I also have implemented healthy boundaries with them. And I'll be real, boundaries are hard. You know, when I first started learning this concept of boundaries and realizing that I needed to create them, it made me scared. It made me nervous. I didn't want to because I didn't want to hurt anybody. I didn't want to offend anyone. But when I realized that boundaries were actually protecting that relationship that I'm creating boundaries with, I realized that this is good. If I didn't create those boundaries, it actually damages the relationship more that I'm creating boundaries with. It's either I cut this person off completely or I create healthy boundaries to where we can still have interaction, but it's in this safe place. Does that make sense? Because if I didn't put those boundaries there, then I could not have a relationship with this person and I'm not willing to throw it all away. Boundaries are for the greater good and ultimately promote peace and protect relationships. So don't be afraid and be confident, but protect yourself and your family in order to enjoy a home of peace. And in Proverbs 22, 24 through 25, it says, don't make friends with hot tempered people. Don't associate with one easily angered, or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. Proverbs just came in hot again. Okay. It's talking about boundaries. Don't be friends with angry people. Don't associate with them. And what's crazy about this verse is it says, or you may learn their ways. The truth is those that you associate with, you will be influenced with. They will influence you and they will influence those that you love and they will influence the way that you see other people. It is important to create those healthy boundaries. But I want you to know at the end of the day that you can trust God, right? He cares about your peace and he cares about the peace of your home. And Jesus himself, he is called the Prince of Peace. He is called the Prince of Peace, not because that just powerful, sweet, crazy name, like, wow, Prince of Peace, that sounds cool. Because he is literally the Prince of Peace. He is peace. He is, he is peace, right? And if he is the Prince of Peace, how much more does he care that your home would be a home of peace? That your family, your marriage, you and your relationship with loved ones would be relationships filled with peace. He does not want you sitting with the luxuries of life at your dinner table with your family, maybe eating a three-course meal, 
but yet y'all's hearts are broken. Y'all's hearts are bitter. Y'all's hearts are angry. Y'all's hearts are resentful against each other. And y'all are just going through the motions of everyday life, cooking, cleaning, angry bed. He doesn't want that for you. He wants whatever is going on in your home and in your family. He wants y'all to hash it out, talk it out, prayerfully come before him, deal with it, expose it, heal it, restore it. Because the peace of your home is worth it. Your family is worth it. But ultimately he is there and he's saying, I am the Prince of Peace. If you welcome me into your heart, if you welcome me into your home, I will take it and I will bring peace. And so I truly believe the closer we become to Christ, the more that we allow him into our heart, his peace and so much more of who he is will radiate in your life and be um, overflow into your family. And so with that being said, um, I want to pray for y'all as we end this message. And so God, I just thank you for these women and I thank you for your word. And I thank you that you are the Prince of peace. And I pray for every woman here that might be just feeling frustrated, Lord, because they want nothing more than peace. And maybe right now it doesn't feel that way. Maybe they're just yearning and they're trying. They're trying to do their part. They're trying to pray. They're trying to welcome you in. And sometimes it just feels frustrating because where's the peace? But I ask God that you would take all of these things all of the strife, all of the hurt, all of the pain, all of the unforgiveness, whatever is causing division. And I pray that you would take it and that you would do healing in their homes, in their families, in their hearts, in their marriages, their relationships with their children and all around. I pray that right now that you would fill everyone's home right now with your Holy Spirit, with your spirit of peace. God, we all welcome you into our heart right now. And we ask you, Prince of Peace, to be our peace, to be the peace in our home and the peace in our life, that in this crazy, crazy world, not only in our own lives, but the world all around us in turmoil, we want to desperately grasp your peace because everything is trying to steal it. And so I just pray, God, that in the midst of life, that we would be women who stand for your peace, who are filled with your peace and that bring your peace everywhere we go, God. And so I just pray healing over families and I pray peace over these women's hearts. And I thank you for your word that's alive and powerful. And we love you, Jesus. Amen. I hope you found encouragement today. I'd love to connect with you. You can find me by following Lauren A. Hargrove on Instagram or Facebook. And before you go, can you do me a favor and leave a rating and review for this show? I would greatly appreciate it. And it would help other moms better find the show too. With that, thank you for being a part of our community today and until next time.